Hello, welcome to this video tutorial for DT Register uh, looking at the functionality of discount codes. We are looking right now at a Joomla 2.5 website and looking at version 2.7.18 of DT Register and the functionality that is here is essentially the same as what you'd see in any other version of 2.7 uh, at the time, uh, there are some features that have been added in more recent versions, so if you have something older, you might not see everything that's here. Uh, so uh, let's go through and see how to utilize discount codes, or what some people might call coupon codes, here within DT Register. All right, you can see I'm already in the back end. Uh, if you go to Components, DT Register, Discount Codes, that's where I'm at right now and I already have some codes here that have been created and you can see here in the list of codes uh, the name which is the database name of the code uh, the start and end date and time of when the code is active uh, what the actual code is that somebody would enter to get that discount uh, if the code is published or not uh, what the limit is and how many times it has been used now how many times it has been used uh, means totally because you can have one code that's used for multiple events so this will tell you how many times it's been used for all of your events together uh, so if you happen to have a limit of say 12 like you see here that means 12 per event so uh, it would be possible to see a number on used that's more than the limit so just clarification there so let's go and create a new discount code All right, here. This is um, pretty simple to do, and you can see you got tool tips here on the side that tell you what each one of these uh, parameters are. Uh, so make sure you look at those; that'll help you a lot. Uh, so name, you're going to enter uh, a name that is database friendly. So it's uh, can I have any spaces or special characters? So let's just call this demo code and give a start date let's just say yesterday and this is a good all right this is a code we're going to make this good for about a week here um, you can make it good for as long as you need to you can get in and manually modify the time if you want to make it active at a specific time you can do that or deactivate at a specific time the limit, if it's if there is no limit, you can just leave that blank. But uh, you can say, you know, say uh, 30, for example, that would be that can be used 30 times for that for each event. Uh, publish, we're gonna publish it so it is can be used. Code preference per event or all events. If I put per event, that means this code is not going to be activated for any of my current events unless I go in manually and activate the code for each event that I want it on. If I select instead all events, then this code will automatically be enabled for all of my current events. Um, and it will also auto automatically be activated for any new events that I create. So if this is a code that you want to use most of the time at least then uh, you would want to use all events you still would have the option if you hit all events you could still go into an event that you don't want it and deactivate the code uh, let's see let's go ahead and just put all events uh, discount type amount or percentage pretty self-explanatory but this is going to determine do you want your discount to be five dollars or five percent uh, so if I put amount and then I put in two dollars that's going to be a two dollar discount if I change this it would be two percent uh, in the amount box you do not put any currency signs symbols and you do not put a percentage sign you just put the numbers then uh, your actual code this is what somebody would type in to activate this discount code so uh, let's just 
make it simple. Demo code. That's what somebody would type and then get this code. This could be a combination of letters and numbers. Again, you don't want to use any special characters. Um, all right, active and registration types. This allows you to say if this code is only good for individual registrations, only good for group registrations, or both. So if I put it on both, it's going to be used for the event regardless of whether it's in an individual or group. Uh, this does allow you to get uh, more specific um, to where a code can only apply. For example, say in a group registration, you're already offering a group discount, so you don't want to offer an additional discount on top of that. You might want to only make your code good for individuals. All right, active and group registration. So this parameter here is only going to matter if the code is used in group registrations or both. And so here you can say, just like you can for fields in an event, you can say this code can only be active for each member in a group registration or on the billing page or members and billing. In a detailed group registration, you have um, a page of information for each member in the group, then you have your final billing page. Uh, you can enable within the event itself, you can enable if discount code, if that discount code field is going to be offered for each member or on the billing page or both. So you have that option for the event. Right here for the code, you can do the same type of setting and, um, and say where it's going to be active. So say I put this on uh, each member and somebody comes in in a group registration and on the page for member one they put in this demo code they're going to get two dollars off of that member. But if they try to put that code in again on the billing page it will not be accepted because it's, it's only active for members in a group. Uh, so you can set that either way. Uh, either way you want it. Let's just put it on billing for here. And then minimum group size, maximum group size. These are settings that you can leave blank if you don't um, need them. Uh, but what they do allow you to do is give even more specific on what type of groups can use this code. So I could say this code is only active if a group has at least five people. So that would be a minimum group size and a maximum of 10. So what this would say is if a group registration came in for three people, they would not be able to use this code at all. Doesn't matter if it's member, billing, none of that matters if they don't meet the group size requirements. Or if the group is larger than 10, they're not gonna be able to use it either. But if you don't need those type of restrictions, then just leave it blank and save it as is. So let's save the code. So it's created successfully. That's what you want to see. Here's my new code down here at the bottom. Set up just like we said. Now the next step, this is not the only step. Once you've created the code, it exists, but it's not active uh, to be used quite yet. Let's go into the event setup. Let's go to uh, this demonstration conference here. Now within the event uh, setup here, you have your different tabs. Hit the discounts and fees tab. At the bottom of this tab, you'll see the discount code area. This will list all of your available discount codes. Now, uh, notice first, you will not even have a discount code field for this event during registration unless that functionality is enabled. So you have use discount code. By default for your event, it's going to say no. So you have to turn it on if you want to use that. But it's not just yes and no. You have no and then you have yes optional or yes required. If I put yes or either one of those, my event will have a discount code field that the user can type in um, whether I have 
codes active or not. So uh, I activate the field itself, um, but if I put optional, that functions just like you know your standard coupon code does, where if you type in a code that is that is active, then the discount applies. Uh, if you don't, then you just pay normal price. Now, if I change this to yes required that means the person will not actually be able to register and complete the form unless they have an active discount code this essentially gives you the ability to make your event password protected uh, so you can say the code I just created the demo code if I set this to yes required I could make it to where somebody can't register for this event unless they have the the special code. So they put it in, it's accepted, then they're allowed to fill out the form and proceed. Otherwise, it's not validated and they cannot continue the registration process. Okay, so let's just leave it on optional. Then here, similar to the setup of the code itself, group registration code display. This is what I was mentioning earlier. You can say, for this particular event, am I going to offer a discount code field for each member? Am I going to offer it only on the billing page, or am I going to offer it on both? Uh, and allow people to kind of double up their discount codes. So keep that in mind and set it up according to however you need it. And then here you see all of your available codes. You, If the code has a checkbox next to it, that means that code can be used for this event. Here's the demo code that we just created. You can see it already has a checkbox. That's because we set it to be created for all events. So it's activated automatically. If I uncheck this box, somebody could type demo code in while registering for this event and it will not be validated. So the code has to be active here. All right, so that is set up. I'm going to go ahead and save. So now I might, that code is definitely ready to go. I can do a registration now uh, using that code and get my $2 discount. One other thing I want to point out here is on the event management side, you have this fee ordering. And uh, that's explained in another video, uh, but I just I wanted to point that out. If you are using any percentage discount codes pay attention to the fee ordering if you're just using flat dollar amounts fee ordering does not matter um, but the fee ordering will list any anything that's being used in the calculation of fees for this event and which includes codes so you can see here demo code that I just created is now on the list if I had made that a two percent then uh, <clears throat> then you would want to drag and drop this and put it wherever it's appropriate to make sure the percentage is calculated at the right time um, so but again that only matters in percentage so let's take a look real quick on the front end let's go to register for this event this is a five dollar event I'm just going to register as an individual Okay, so you can see my total cost is $5, and I have a discount code field here at the top of the form. If I type in demo code, you can see I got the check saying it's validated, and my price has already changed from $5 to $3. So my new code was applied, as it should be. Then once I get to, um, I'll go ahead and fill out the rest of this. See my price changed again because of the field selection I made. It's a, a fee field. If you want to know more about that, you can watch the video on selection fields. So proceeding on, and on the confirmation page, I will get this message as it details out what was uh, applied to calculate this price, this finished price of $1.50 in this case, discount code applied, you save $2. So um, that will tell the user, 
hey, your code is good to go and you save some money. So there you go, and that's how you use discount codes within DT Register 2.7. Uh, if you have questions or run into any uh, problems in the process, you can post in the forum or submit a support ticket and we'll help you out. Thanks a lot.